I was sort of thinking this morning about like when I was a teenager and I was really into 3D modeling. So like, you know, making things in, in 3D and because uh, I was really into Lego and I was really into like building physical objects and like that was sort of the thing that got me finally interested in computers at like age 15 because I didn't really care much for them prior to that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like when you make Lego and you make, you know, you make physical objects and it's like, well, you can make, you can make whatever you want in this environment and it's free, uh, you know, so far as materials or whatever. And you can just, you, it's just like drawing. But it was always really important to me that the mesh, like the actual objects, like was was had some sort of integrity as as a thing. And I remember this kid at the sort of the hippie high school that uh, that I went to, and uh, he was also into 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 three D. But he his his approach was that well you don't have to you don't have to do anything that the camera is not going to see. And I had like a problem with this. And I mean, this is the thing too, is like he was like really quick. Like he would make things and people would be really impressed. Like, oh my God, this kid is amazing. And it's like, yeah, sure. Because you're just putting a block here and a block there. And you're not, you're not making stuff like an actual thing. You're, you're just, you know, arranging a scene, um, which is going to have all sorts of problems if you're like ray tracing and there's reflections and stuff like that. But that's sort of beside the point. And it does uh, echo, in a lot of ways, just my own experience with the, the film and TV industry. My, uh, uh, a lot of family members have, have been in it in some capacity or another. And it really is like, you know, it's like, absolutely, like you only do what the camera's going to see. And you actually waste quite a bit of effort if like the director decides like oh we actually want to shoot it from this side and it's like oh well th there is no this side so now you got to go and make it kind of a thing I mean that doesn't happen all the time but there's always a risk of that kind of thing happening but you know I mean there's other applications for say 3d modeling that like like industrial design where you absolutely do have to make the thing and you don't really care so much about like how it looks when it's rendered. I mean, it's obviously got to look fine, but uh, there's a more of a uh, importance on the integrity of the object because it's going to actually be like made into something. But again, like also like industrial design, you know, you're going to put way more effort into these objects than you, than you would if you were doing film and TV. So yeah, that got me thinking about like just the sort of fake it till you make it calculus, I guess, uh, to the extent that, you know, you have a decision, you can go this way or you can go this way, you know, and you might get to, to some result in the end. Uh, and and uh, once you're sort of on one path, like like the cost of going to the other path is also usually untenable. So you're kind of like committed to a strategy sort of once you pick one. Uh, and I guess the, the, the sort of, I was thinking about this in, in the context of the sort of, you know, the, the, the maximum of faking it till you make it and how, uh, so much, you know, you sort of see stuff in the news is like, uh, like, oh, it's say all this AI business is like, oh, it turns out it's just like mechanical Turks, you know, reviewing things and pushing buttons uh, kind of thing. And, and uh, it's kind of the, I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's like the plot of um, Joanne McNeil's uh, latest book, Wrong Way, where it's like, oh, like we're one day we're going to have full autonomous driving, but until then we're, you know, we're going to fake it kind of thing. And I mean, sim similar thing with those uh, those uh, cabs or whatever the the autonomous cabs in the uh, in San Francisco, where it's like you need whatever it is, like you need one and a half drivers per car uh, to actually manage it. 
and they're also like expensive technicians rather than you know cabbies which is you know the, with the, with the promise the sort of expectation that they will eventually get to a point where they'll be fully autonomous so there's what's interesting about just sort of the the fake it till you make it sort of ethos in general and one of the kinds of frustrating things for me for uh, this intertwingler project is that there is no fake it till you make it and the reason for that is like I actually need the damn thing to work in order to you know do anything that's gonna look like anything and furthermore uh, it's got to be robust enough like it's like there's there's just basically there's no cutting corners like there's no Potemkin thingy like it's just because yeah like you need it to work I need it to work in order to cut up all the pieces really small and organize them like that's I'm not doing that by hand you know I'm not doing that like with some faked up process because it's like that's the thing that it does that I need it to do and I mean that all that all works but just as an example um my uh so I don't I like it could go online you know today but if it actually starts getting hits it's going to it's going to fall over and the reason for that is that all of the computation is bare there's no caching attached to it yet and so uh, I don't feel comfortable putting it online because like what's going to happen is it's going to fall over and then I'm going to have a busted thing that I'm going to have to fix in, in an emergency. Um, so I'm going to go do caching. I, I already know how I'm going to do it. It's like, ugh, fine, God, like that's what's going to be the next couple weeks of my life, I suppose, is getting this thing to a state where it'll, it'll, it'll start being able to take some traffic. It's actually the, I've written most of the code. One of the things that I got to do is, um, so I have a, a content addressable store that I, I have written. And so what's going to happen is, is you're going to push the thing through a, a transformation function, whatever the content is, it gets put through, through a transformation function. And then it just gets piped through this thing, this, this content addressable store. And that'll hash it, store it. It'll add some metadata that says like, oh, you, you take this and you, you know, you take this input and you take this, uh, this thing, this, this process, you will get this output and then save that. And then so the next time you, you do the same thing, it'll just pull out the content addressable store. That's all fine. The problem it's going to be is when... There's stuff in the content addressable store that is, we know it's cache, and then there's stuff that we aren't sure. And so what I wanna do is go into the content addressable store code itself and like add some field or whatever that says like this is cache and you can delete it if, if there's, if nothing comes along and nukes, or not nukes it, sorry. Uh, zeros out the the cache flag or whatever is going to be probably a timestamp, you know, like you save the keep this get rid of it on this date kind of thing. Um, yeah, so if somebody comes along and like reinserts the same thing, then that is uh, it'll just wipe out that the cache thing. It'll keep it from then on, and if not, it'll just get nuked when it's when it's time. Anyway, that's next week's plan, and I am going to ship the Chapter 8 of The Nature of Software today, uh, and now I am going to finish my coffee.